New tonight, a Stop the Violence event and march was held today in Spartanburg. People gathered at Duncan Park to honor local mothers whose sons were killed by gun violence. My son was killed in July the 25th, 2021, and it's an unsolved case. He says there's no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in this land. It's definitely some searching that still has to be done. Like, far as the community, I mean, it's hard to get anybody to come together to want to do anything. As far as police department, you know, they don't do the bare minimum, but we really haven't had nobody to come out and really, you know, just be on our side and just go deep, deep and hard like we want. Several nonprofit organizations, including people from Israel United in Christ, were also there. We have to change these things in our community. Well, how do we change them if we don't change this? We can't change anything in our community until we first change our minds according to what is written in the Holy Scriptures. Seeing y'all here encourages me. Yes, yes. How y'all, y'all discipline, y'all structure everything about it. I, I really like it. It's really encouraging. Anything we have, y'all are definitely welcome to come at any point in time. Y'all always welcome. No, no, no. It's cause of the sun, why we always gotta die on the block. Hassle, we got the bishop part back. See what I'm saying? Hassle, we got the bishop part back. Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support, because without you, this work could not be possible. I often love to read a little bit of our hidden history. And I'm, I'm still dealing with the Arabs. I'm still dealing with the sons and daughters of Ishmael. The Arabs, okay? I don't care if they are in Iraq. I don't care if they are in Turkey. I don't care if they are in India. I'm dealing with the sub-Saharan slave trade still, wherein they enslaved our brothers and sisters and forced them through murder and a rape to become Muslims. That history, nobody want to talk about it, but we going to talk about it. Well, I shouldn't say nobody wants to talk about it. I should say it this way. Black Muslims will not talk about it. You know how black Christians don't talk about slavery? They don't open a Bible and they read nothing from the Bible about slavery. They skip all those passages and find love, love, love. Well, that's what black Muslims do, too. They're in the same boat, same buggy, same carriage. All right. So let's take a look at some history and then I'll come right back. All right. Crania Egyptiaca, Observations of Egyptian Ethnography. All right. This was published in... 1844. All right, going over to page 66. Number eight. Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same, was the same that it is, that it now is, that of servants and slaves. So who were the servants and slaves in Egypt? 
the Israelites. That's what they're saying. The Israelites. A treatise on physical geography. This book was published in 1850. Going over to page 297. Thus the Jews are a people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone, without intermixing with the nations to this day. Now this separate race all descended from brown ancestors, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan, if not darker, exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar, of whom we have such an interesting account by Dr. Claudius Buchanan to the rose and lily complexion of the Jewess on the banks of Elbi. These are the converts. These are the Edomite converts, the rose and lily complexion Jewesses. All right. We, I'll start here. We need go no further than the Jews of southern Spain and compare them with those of Holland and northern Germany to perceive a very striking difference. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexion and his hair is uniformly black, while the German Jew is often as fair as any German, these are the converts, Visigoths, and has light or red hair with blue eyes. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race tends to the same conclusion. Along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black complexions and this is the very country from which the which American Negroes have been derived. So they're telling you that the American Negroes, which many come from Guinea, also are the same people as the Spanish Jew that is always dark complexioned, which uh, descend from the Jews of Malabar, are uh, dark descend from dark skinned Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been dark on the transatlantic trade that featured American and European merchants. The British, Portuguese, Dutch, French, Spaniards, and Danes of Denmark were involved in the oceanic trade in African men, women, and children, which lasted from the mid-16th century until the 1860s. At this time, more than 15 million Africans were enslaved and transported to the Americas. Only 10 to 12 million would make it through the sea to face a life of harsh labor, discrimination, and abuse. While the transatlantic slave trade is well known, taught in school, another form of slavery that was just as devastating has been kept secret. This other trade remains largely ignored, and at times has even been treated as a taboo subject, despite being a key component of African history owing to the devastating impact it has had on the continent, its generations, and its people's way of life. In this video, we are going to talk about the Arab Muslim slave trade. We will take a look at the Trans-Saharan slave trade in particular, where Arabs would raid, capture, and enslave even fellow Arabs and Muslims just because they had black skin. How Arabs justified these deeds using verses from their holy scripture, and how the slave trade still exists today. The Arab Muslim slave trade, also known as the Trans-Saharan trade or Eastern slave trade, is noted as the longest slave trade, having occurred for more than 1,300 years while taking millions of Africans away from their continent to work in foreign lands in the most inhumane conditions. Scholars have christened it a veiled genocide, attributing the tagline to the most humiliating and near-death experience slaves were subjected to, from capture in slave markets to labor fields abroad and the harrowing journey in between. While official figures on the exact number of slaves captured from Africa and the Trans-Sahara trade are contested, most scholars put the estimate at about 9 million. Garamantes, an ancient civilization based primarily in the southern region of Libya, relied heavily on slave labor from sub-Saharan Africa. They used slaves in their own communities to construct and maintain underground irrigation systems known to Berbers as Fogara. Ancient Greek historian Herodotus recorded in the 5th century BC that the Garamantes enslaved cave-dwelling Ethiopians, known as troglodyte, chasing them with chariots. In the early Roman Empire, 
the city of Lepsis established a slave market to buy and sell slaves from the Bantu African interior. In the 5th century AD, Roman Carthage was trading in black slaves brought across the Sahara. The empire imposed customs tax on the trade of slaves. Black slaves seem to have been valued as household slaves for their exotic appearance. Some historians argue that the scale of slave trade in this period may have been higher than medieval times due to the high demand for slaves in the Roman Empire. However, the slave trade through the Sahara in antiquity may have been small and rare, as Saharan trade didn't reach large dimensions until the Arabs and Berbers introduced large numbers of camels into the desert. The Trans-Saharan slave trade, established in antiquity, continued during the Middle Ages. Following the early 8th century conquest of North Africa, Arabs, Berbers, and other ethnic groups ventured into sub-Saharan Africa first, along the Nile Valley towards Nubia, and also across the Sahara towards West Africa. They were interested in the trans-Saharan trade, especially in slaves, as there was a constant demand for slaves in the Eastern Arab nations and Constantinople. The Muslim slave traders distinguished themselves from the peoples on the other side of the Sahara, referring to these African populations as Zanj or Sudan, meaning black. Woo! Now y'all saw that thing right there. Now, this is little known history. Little known history because I guarantee you, just like I never learned about this in school, I guarantee the vast majority of you, especially if you live in America, have not learned this history. Even if you live in uh, London, Britain, you have not learned this history. It's been swept under the rug. Why? Arabs got a lot of money. That oil money. You want our oil, you will take our history on that out of the school. Okay? Do you understand? Ah, salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Oh, come off it. So, as we've discovered, Arabs and slave blacks, even later, Black Muslims, yes, they enslaved black Muslims too. They didn't give a damn if you were Muslim. They didn't give a damn just because they were black. Now, we know spiritually God ordained this because we, as the Israelites, broke his commandments. He prophesied this would happen to us. Yes, 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 he did. Yes, 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 he did. I'm going to show you all that. Uh, and Arabs, if you confront them on this, truth they justify it with some crap that's in the Quran with no, what do they call it? Surah, no textual reality at all. So why don't black Muslims talk about this? These are questions every brother and sister, you need to confront them on that. Just like with black Christians, confront them. Why don't you talk about slavery and use the biblical text, please? to explain who, what, when, where, why. Hmm? They won't do it. They won't do it. But instead, what, are they, what will they do? Black Muslims and black Christians will get mad at us, the Israelites, for dare talking about this history. How dare you? And then all of a sudden, we're evil, we're racist, we're a cult, we want to hurt people. We've heard it yada, 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 yada. We've heard it time and time before. Let's open up with Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right. Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to start at verse 15, as we often do. Remember, brothers and sisters, where is this taking place? Let me be more specific. On what continent is Deuteronomy 28, Moses speaking to us? Hmm? Is it in America? Hmm? How about South America? How about Asia? Is Moses speaking to us in Australia, Antarctica, Europe, Africa? Do you know? Do you know? Well, if you said Africa, your answer is correct. He's speaking to us on the continent of Africa. So let's open up with Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, 
to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So here in Africa, Moses is telling us if we break God's what? Did he say Protestant religion? Did he say Catholic religion? Did he say Seventh-day Adventist religion? Did he say the Jehovah Witness? Did he say Islam? Did he say Buddhism? No. He said if we break God's commandments. That's what the entire Bible is about, the commandments. When you, even when you read about the word religion in the Bible, guess what it's referring to? God's commandments. That's right. God's commandments. And there's more than 10. Oh, yeah, there's more than 10. Okay. So let's jump down to verse 32. I'm going to read. Attention, Israel. Shout Out Tuesday will no longer be hosted on YouTube. For all future viewing, go over to and subscribe to IUIC TV. And remember, stay in the spirit. Shalom, Most High in Christ bless.